This is Lou Dobbs Tonight. News, debate, and opinion for Tuesday, January 16th. Live in New York, Lou Dobbs. Good evening, everybody. Insurgents in Iraq today killed 107 Iraqis in one of the worst days of violence in Baghdad in weeks. Seventy of those Iraqis were killed in a bomb attack against a university. The attacks apparently designed to push Iraq even closer to civil war. Meanwhile, the U.S. military says there's been a sharp increase in the number of terrorist attacks in Afghanistan. The U.S. commander in Afghanistan, General Carl Eikenberry, today said he wants additional U.S. troops sent to fight radical Islamist terrorists. Arwa Damon tonight reports from Baghdad on the day's deadly attacks in the Iraqi capital. Jamie McIntyre reports from the Pentagon on the possibility that more of our troops could be sent to Afghanistan as well as Iraq. And Ed Henry reporting from the White House tonight on the president's determination to achieve victory. First, Arwa Damon from Baghdad. Two bombs in one place, aimed at causing maximum casualties. A car bomb parked under a pedestrian bridge at the main entrance to Mustansariya University, blending in with other vehicles waiting to pick up students and employees. At the same time, a suicide bomber with an explosive vest mixed with students at the university's back entrance, waiting for the evening rush home. They exploded near simultaneously. Dozens were killed, over 160 wounded. And officials expect the number of dead to rise. The university is in a predominantly Shia part of Baghdad on the edge of Sutter City. A CNN producer at the scene said heavily armed militiamen, loyal to radical Shia cleric Muqtada al-Sutter, arrived soon after the attack. It was not the first of the day. Hours earlier, a bomb exploded close to al-Sutter's main office. At least four people were killed in that attack. Elsewhere in Baghdad, a roadside bomb exploded, killing two policemen and two civilians. Ten others were wounded. The explosion coming just as police had successfully defused a car bomb. Two hours later, also in the heart of the capital, a roadside bomb exploded, targeting a police patrol. Again, as emergency forces responded and a crowd gathered, another bomb exploded. It was hidden under a motorcycle. The explosions killed at least 15 and wounded 70. Whatever optimism may have been generated by the announcement of a new joint U.S.-Iraqi plan to secure the capital, it has been quickly overshadowed by reality. Altogether, more than 100 people lost their lives just in the capital on Tuesday. Over double that number were wounded. And that on the very same day that the United Nations estimated that over 34,000 civilians had died last year. Lou? Arwa Damon reporting from Baghdad. Insurgents also killed four more of our troops in Iraq today. The soldiers were killed by a roadside bomb in northern Iraq. Twenty of our troops have been killed in Iraq so far this month. 3,024 killed since the war began. 22,834 troops wounded. 10,191 of them so seriously they could not return to duty within three days. Insurgents in Afghanistan are also sharply escalating their attacks against U.S. troops. The U.S. commander in Afghanistan, General Carl Eikenberry, said attacks by radical Islamists have risen by 300 percent since last September. General Eikenberry told Defense Secretary Robert Gates that he needs more troops in Afghanistan. Jimmy McIntyre reports from the Pentagon. It was Robert Gates' first up-close look at the other war he's responsible for winning, a war he admits he hasn't paid as much attention to until now. In meetings with U.S. commanders and Afghan President Hamid Karzai, the new U.S. Defense Secretary is hearing that problems in Afghanistan are eerily similar to, but on a smaller scale, than Iraq. First off, commanders tell Gates it's unlikely the U.S. can reduce the number of American ground troops now at an all-time high of 24,000 any time this year or maybe even next. Instead, they warn even more troops may be required. If the commanders in the field believe that uh, more forces are required to do that, uh, then I certainly would be strongly inclined to recommend that to the president. Lieutenant General Carl Eikenberry, the top U.S. commander, has already requested that one U.S. infantry battalion, roughly 1,200 soldiers from the Army's 10th Mountain Division, stay on for a whole year instead of going home after four months. 
and NATO is still waiting for other U.S. allies to send a reserve battalion of 1,200 additional NATO troops that the alliance promised last year but failed to deliver. We're not talking about the need for large numbers of forces in order to have the margin of victory we need to win. Not a strong enemy, small numbers of forces added to the mix here, small numbers of capabilities can be decisive. As in Iraq, violence in Afghanistan has surged in recent months. The number of insurgent attacks jumped 300 percent since September. Right after, the Pakistani government negotiated a deal with tribal leaders harboring al-Qaeda members in North Waziristan along Afghanistan's eastern border. Al-Qaeda now seems to be moving across the border with impunity. And that the border area is a problem, uh, that there are <clears throat> more attacks coming across the border, that there are al-Qaeda networks operating on the Pakistani side of the border. General Eikenberry, that top U.S. commander, is predicting a violent spring as the Taliban uh, comes back with what has become uh, an annual spring offensive, but he predicts the U.S. and NATO forces will dominate. But that said, any hope of a real end to the fighting in Afghanistan, as in Iraq, rests with the local police and army, uh, both of whom have shown at this point they're not yet up to the task. Luke? Not up to the task. Uh, four years, uh, almost uh, five uh, uh, since the United States uh, entered that uh, that theater, when will troops, do the defense uh, officials say, when do U.S. troops begin coming home? Well, not this year uh, and probably not next year. In fact, they're saying in order to, to increase the training in a similar strategy to what's being employed in Iraq, they may need to bring additional U.S. troops in. And, of course, Lou, the other part of the problem is NATO is not stepping up. They promised uh, troops, and they're still 10 percent below the level of troops they promised to send to Afghanistan last year, and they still haven't sent them this year. Jamie, thank you. Jamie McIntyre reporting from the Pentagon. U.S. troops in Kabul say two Afghans prevented a terrorist attack on a U.S. base, and they are heroes. The Afghans 